Oh hey, if you think gallery walls are so 2000 and late, I don't care because that's what we're doing today. Do you have suggestions? Oh baby, welcome to Laugh Cry DIY. I'm your girl Katie, and today we are doing the most basic decor project of all time, which is a gallery wall. This is the first episode where I'm starting my living room makeover bit by bit, and episode by episode, we are gonna tackle everything I hate about my own space. Starting with the worst gallery wall ever. When you walk into my house, this is the first thing you see. It is the cane credenza I made on the very first episode of this channel. And this credenza is incredibly cluttered, as is the dumb wall behind it. When we moved in, I threw things up on the wall totally haphazard, simply because I could not bear to face my worst enemy, which is a blank wall. Ew. So I threw up a bunch of stuff I already had in frames. None of it goes together. None of it's really cute. Now, what this space is currently cluttered with are records, albums, books, and collector's items that belong to my boyfriend. And because this is where his record player is, he is a collector of a lot of music stuff, I wanted to create an area here that I'm gonna call the record lounge. Record lounge, record lounge. I wanna showcase some of the vinyls. I wanna showcase some of the art that he's collected since we moved in. And I wanna make this space a little bit more cohesive, but still dramatic. Step one, let's get all of this off the wall. And luckily I used all command strips for this, so. Hi, welcome to how to remove a command strip properly with me, Katie. Do not pull out, pull down. All you need to do is pull down and you'll see that it's actually coming apart and out from that. Pull and snap. Pull and snap. And snap. It's a command strip monster, but they're all off the wall. Now, everybody has their tips for gallery walls and you can achieve different looks by doing different things. So if you want a really eclectic look, use a lot of different funky frames, different colors, different textures, different finishes. You can stagger them. They don't have to be all neat and symmetrical. For my gallery wall, we have a lot of different art, and so I would like to create some cohesion by having the same frame. We are just gonna go with simple black frames, and we are gonna spray paint many of those frames with Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch in a black semi-gloss. I meant to get like a satin, but I got a semi-gloss. And you know what? We're gonna live with it. So here you can see the disaster I've made with all these thrifted frames, and now we're officially gonna spray paint. Oh wait, great news. I found more black spray paint in my stash. I wanted satin, and what I have is flat or high gloss. One thing that's also super important when you're doing frames is to make sure you're spraying the inside of the frame because that will also show from the side. So we're gonna let all our frames dry and we'll be back. Alrighty, while those frames all dry, um, I'm gonna get started on the next part of this gallery wall. Go to the hardware store, get a paper drop cloth. This is a nine by 12, it was $6 giant piece of paper, and you're gonna trace every frame and cut out every frame. That way you can pop it on the wall and get a sense of where everything's gonna go. Oh baby, we probably have 25 templates cut. I have an enormous amount of art to put on the wall. So I'm just gonna grab my painter's tape and start painting on. Now before we start, I do have a few problems that I'm trying to solve for when I lay out the template. Number one, this beautiful movie poster. We do not always have movie posters in our home, but when we do, they are framed and signed by the director. So this is a massive piece. So I'm trying to figure out if that should be the center and everything else should go around it or if I should try to like counterbalance with other things. So we're just gonna mix and match with the templates and see what we think. So I've put up like two thirds of the art and I'm already running out of wall space. So I think we might uh, be doing some curation. Dead, dead. Okay, I've rearranged it about 5,500 times and I don't know if I like it still. Do you have suggestions? Okay, I've been going very symmetrical with this, very just like simple grid. And I think I'm gonna experiment with getting a little wild with grouping it in a kind of interesting um, like shape formation, maybe a little irregularly. I 
think I've lost the plot entirely, <laughs> but boy, is it a good idea to cut out templates of your art. I think the big challenge here is that I have just a lot of really large pieces and that doesn't allow for much breathing room, which is fine normally, but um, I don't know, I just can't seem to find a layout that I'm good with. So I think I'm gonna take a break and come back to it. Okay, I took a three second break and I realized I might have another place for the large poster in the house. So I'm gonna redo it without that one. Okay, we've reorganized, we've looked, we've stepped back, we've taken a moment, we've had a breath, we've looked again, and I think I am comfortable with this beautiful arrangement. I like that it's kind of like a funky um, shape, and I never thought I'd say that, but it is finally time to hang it all up. But before we do that, I need to add one special piece to this project. Okay, so like I said, we are creating here a really fun kind of record lounge listening station. A lot of our art is like music themed. My boyfriend collects vinyl and he listens to it quite frequently. So I wanted to add something special to this wall to actually make his vinyl listening um, more functional and aesthetic. What does that mean? I went on Amazon and I got these very cool wall mounted record holders that we can put right here. I very purposely got these kind of like wireframe style. There's a lot of really cool shelves, but Little Miss Baguette is a jumper. And when we first moved in, I put some small little runner shelves up and she immediately hopped on them and tore them off the wall. I'm also putting them on the left-hand side of the record player because not only is the record player on the left-hand side, my boyfriend's left-handed, so it's natural for him to move to the left to put something in. Blah. These are so cool. To figure out where to nail in your holes, here's what you do. You're gonna get yourself a piece of painter's tape and you're gonna cut it to the width of your piece of art. Place it right below where you would be making your marks. And I'm just gonna mark where I would wanna put my holes. Then you put that on the wall and then you can put your level over it and you can see whether or not you're off. Me, I'm super off. <laughs> And then you can rip this off with rage in your heart. Yeah. This is the blueprint to Angel's Flight, which is a cool old trolley from the turn of the century that is in downtown LA. This is a super cool vintage inspired uh, travel poster that I got off of Etsy. Okay, I have to tell you about the incredible history of this next piece. So there is a hotel in downtown LA called the Biltmore. It's a stunning art deco hotel. It's one of my boyfriend and I's favorite places. It's also the last place the Black Dahlia was seen alive. Do they serve a cocktail named after her at the bar? Yes. Is that ethical? Mm. Now, separately, I have a grandmother who I'm named after, who I never met because she died when she was young. But I was at my mom's garage, you know, going through old things, and we found a collection of papers. And what it was was when my grandmother was like 11 or 12, she took a train trip from Michigan to glamorous Los Angeles. Can you believe it was the 30s? She was drunk. My grandmother, as a young girl, went to the Biltmore and she saved the menu. Coolest find ever? If you wanted to know what people were serving for breakfast at a beautiful hotel in Los Angeles in the 30s, clam juice and also sauerkraut juice. Whew. With all this leveling, I could really go for some clam juice right now. This is Joe Strummer from The Clash, my boyfriend's favorite band. Um, my friend Greg Edwards is an awesome comic and artist, and he does this incredible series called the Red Line series, which is portraits of black artists over the redlined maps of their own hometowns. If you don't know about redlining, it was the very bullshit practice of uh, refusing loans to people of color and segregating them to particular neighborhoods. This is Little Richard, did I say that? Okay, we're like halfway done, but I gotta say this like step pattern really freaking looks cool. Now this piece, this piece is not Joe Strummer. It's Joe Strummer's art. And now the most anticipated collectible um, controversial piece that will go on this wall is my own framed in sync um, 17 magazine from 2001. Guys, please pray for my actual in sync shirt. I went on a trip and the airline lost my luggage. It's a shirt from their first tour. I bought it myself when I was 13 and that current shirt is going for $170. So, <sighs> nowhere to jump, nowhere to hold on to. We're smarter than you. D 
Do you think she knew the next piece of art I wanted to hang, which is a portrait of her. My friend, comedian and artist Paige Weldon does these adorable little watercolors. Do you not like it? This one is also the Biltmore Hotel that is that menu. So cool. And lastly, I'm gonna put in some collector's pieces. Um, this is a Joe Strummer incredible collector's box. Um, and that fits perfectly there. This Miley Cyrus album is such a banger if you don't know. Why don't I have a Miley Cyrus shirt? Now, lastly, we cleared off um, our whole little credenza, but I do still wanna keep some spaces for him to display some more records and fun things. So I just have these dollar store easels. They're super simple, dollar each. They're great for displaying like books or records. And if we're doing a whole like music record vibey wall, why not do our dollar store disco ball planter? And lastly, we have one very special record to display. So one year for Christmas, did I make an entire vinyl record which features Baguette as a girl group called the Mamacitas. And is it a complete album with Baguette as beach girls? as little car city girls. I mean, yes, this is my finest work. I'll never top it and it absolutely needs to be displayed. Now that we have everything on the wall and everything styled, it is finally time for your big reveal. Well, you guys, that was today's episode. What a journey, what trials, what tribulations. But my favorite thing is definitely making a space beautiful and most importantly, functional. And I'm super obsessed with the record racks. So as usual, thank you for watching. And I just have one final question for you. Is Justin the main event? And Titanic 2? You decide.